What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. I did one yesterday and it was actually not bad. You guys actually kind of liked it. So video number two. Welcome. My name is Andy and we're going to do some makeup. So, I mean, I put it in my first video. Not a lot of people have been able to see it because I tried it on Facebook. So technically this is my first video, first YouTube video, whatever. Anyway, um, not much about me, uh, basic, I'm not a pro or anything like that, I'm a welder who got stuck at home and had to find a hobby, so you basically stuck with me. Um, if you think that this is at least decent or something that you want to keep watching, like, comment, subscribe, you know, all that other good stuff, and I mean, it's going to be fire, I mean, the dinosaur even says it, you know what I mean? So when you do makeup, I always do my brows first, but I won't do them on camera because you guys will be stuck here until the end of time. Literally, the dinosaur will live longer than you guys. Just saying. But um, you always want to moisturize, and I just have a little bo bottle of the CeraVe moisturizing lotion because I'm out of my big bottle. So after, you know, you want to wash your face, you want to make sure all excess makeup off is off and your pores and everything like that. You want to make sure everything like that is good. So that way, you know, you don't have any leftover from the day before or, you know, whatever. And just whatever, you know, whatever moisturizer you like, whatever feels good, hydrates your skin. And then what's always next to go in with is a primer. Primer is always going to help always gonna work um, I, I don't have anything high-end unfortunately I use everything from wet and wild to elf to essence to Milani to you know color pop you know the affordable brands because let's face it can't afford it Anastasia can't afford an hourglass so I do the wet and wild and the LA color face primer just because I like the different textures that they both give uh, they both give something a little bit better I mean, one of these days I'll get, you know, a different type of primer for you guys to use, to see. But, I mean, for it being in the price range of what I can afford, it doesn't do, you know, it's not bad. It does the job, keeps my face, you know, primed and tacky and keeps it good, uh, you know, for... Uh oh, I'm almost out of the way. Wow. You know, it keeps it good for all your products to stay on. And I also mix them because the wet and wild one smells really bad. I don't think it's just something that I think it's just something that I'm not like my I guess smell palette is not really happy with. You know when you feel so happy about your skin, you're just like, oh, I'm so smooth. You can't stop touching it. It's awesome. So while I'm letting that sit in for just a minute, um, I usually go in with eyes first because if there is any product on my eye, you know, fallout or anything, it's going to hit my face first before it hits like my foundation or concealer or anything like that. So. I will just go in and usually I use the uh, Mega Last Incognito from Wet n Wild. This is just in medium honey. And it's nothing special. I just use it so that I can, you know, make a base for my lids. You always, always, always want something for your base. You don't do a base, you're going to get something really muddy. Uh, the colors are not going to stick together properly or at all it almost look like you have a big mess And 
there we go. And then it's always good just to put a little bit of setting powder just so uh, the you know your your lids don't crease. I have hooded eyes, so it's really easy for creasing. Um, right now, I'm just using the Wet n Wild Photo Focus translucent powder. You know, not a bad setting powder. It's a good bang for your buck. And I'll tell you what, I've been shopping at thrift stores ever since I was like four, so I'm always looking for a bit for a bang for your buck. right and after that start off with my green beauty you're so chic palette I don't have like I said I don't have any fancy dancy palettes or you know high-end names or anything like that so I kind of just roll with what I got and I really like my palettes and they do a decent job and as long as they do a decent job I'm I'm pretty happy but I like this palette because not only do you get like the neutrals and the shimmers, you get blushes and bronzers, and then you also get a bunch of different colors, and I already broke a purple, which I'm very, very heartbroken about. Okay, anyway. So today I'm going to do something just a little more basic. So I always like to start off with a transition shade, usually. usually. Yesterday I did a pride look and I didn't use one for that, but today I'm going to go in with this lighter brown right here. And usually what I do is I just look for right here on that line where my socket is. Like literally you could push in with your brush, don't poke your eye out, but you can literally push in and feel where your socket is, basically where your crease is. And all I'm using is a little fluffy brush, kind of a little angled brush, but nothing fancy. Like I said, all my stuff is anything but fancy. And when I do the crease and a lot of, you know, with a lot of the blending, it's just circles. Just hold, you know, you want to hold your brush not too far, not too close so you don't have all that tension. But just enough, you know, kind of like if you're paint, you know, painting or something. And it just gives you that nice, really blended look. And then next, what I'm gonna do, yeah, we're gonna go with this one. I'm gonna take a little bullet, uh, very stained, very stained bullet uh, brush. And I'm gonna go in with this darker color right here, just for the outer corner. I don't really have a plan today, or really any day, of what I wanna do. But you know what? We're going to roll with it. And then I'm just going to add that. Just into the crease. And literally, like, when I, like, keep your eye, if you keep your eyes open, you can literally see your socket. Well, it makes life so much easier for you. And basically for the outer corner, I just do a little triangle. Because literally that's all your outer corner is, just a little triangle. And don't worry, it won't stay like this, because you definitely want to blend. Let's see, just little circles. And then I'll go back in with that fluffier brush that we had.
and it just blends everything in and I like keeping it with this one just because I used it for the crease and it kind of has that uh, that lighter brown that we used then at first on it still to kind of blend them in just a little bit better I do want to get a little bit more just right there at the top though I think it works. I hope it works. So the next one I'm gonna do is I am actually gonna do something called a cut crease. And with the cut crease, it's literally just taking your, your concealer or whatever, carving out a piece that you want to be coated in concealer so that something like a shimmer or a metallic or a glitter can really stick to. I mean, obviously with glitter, you might want like glitter glue, but I don't have time for that. sure when I want to make a video that's when it wants to work with me watch now that I said something watch I'm gonna screw it up and what I like about makeup it's literally like art you know what I mean like you're literally like painting something it's pretty cool even with just concealer, you have to focus, you have to keep your eye on it. It's not terrible. I think I said it in the beginning, but I'm no makeup pro. I mean, I've never been like an actual artist or even like worked at Sephora or Ulta, anything like that. I'm literally just somebody who enjoys it, who likes doing it, and that's why I do it. I mean, why else do we do anything really? So while I'm waiting for that to set, I'm just going to take that bullet brush that I used and just go over it just a little bit. And what I like about this palette is it's pretty pigmented, like I barely even touched my brush into it and it's actually doing a pretty decent job. So for me being somebody who doesn't really like the, you know, well, I like the high-end stuff. I can't afford the high-end stuff. So, okay, so not being able to afford the high-end stuff. It's pretty nice to have something, you know, that isn't as expensive, but it's still decent quality. You know what I mean? Okay, cool. Okay, we're just going to stick with like more of the neutral colors today. So I think what I'm going to do is kind of mix it up a little bit. So I'm going to do maybe like a mix of these two colors. Yeah. These two colors are the... Yeah. These two colors are those two colors. Yeah, we'll do that. So we'll start off with this color. And this darker shimmery color right here. Just make sure the brush has some on it. Okay. And sometimes when the brush doesn't want to work with you, take your finger, 
Get it on there. Do we have time for that today? I don't have time for that today. And what I like about doing the cut crease type thing is it just kind of gives that little bit of pop to the color. So let's go in with that lighter color and just work that on top of it. I'm going to have a little fun with it. I'm going to mix them both together at the same time. that up a little bit just kind of make sure everything flows a little bit together and then I just want to take that dark brown a little bit and just kind of defy define god I can never talk in these damn things the outer corner Easy, simple, gets the job done. And then I want to come way the heck over here and I want to take just this little bit of white. I just want to put it right in here. And I don't know if you guys can see it. I mean, I'm using a phone, but I'm having major fallout just hitting my shorts. So. It's good to have well not good to have it's good to have not that's what I'm looking for not have. to not have done anything just yet because it's not gonna mess up your base makeup which is a win I think Okay, cool. See, I'm breaking my own rule already. Okay. So now, while eyes are done for the most part, Today, I'm going to do something I didn't do in my last video, and I'm actually going to color correct. So I'll use a little bit of, you know, color correct if, you know, my eyes are really, you know, just looking tired, and they really are today. So I'm going to use my Vasanti Liquid BO2 Color Correct. Honestly, it was an ad on Facebook. I saw it, and I was like, holy crap, you know. My eyes, you know, my dark circles are really dark. I always had issues covering them. And I tried different concealers. I tried different setting powders. And none of it worked. None of it. So I said, you know, what the hell? We're going to try it. And I have, there it is. And I'm just going to take a flat little foundation brush. And I'm not even going to blend it. I'm just going to dab it in. Tap it in. No? No Happy Gilmore fans? Okay. And basically what I'm doing is just covering the dark circles. I mean, I'm a mom of two. 
I have an eight-year-old and a five-year-old, and they both are very tiring sometimes. <laughs> so the dark circles are very the nature of the game. And if you feel like that's not enough, like mine, I think that might be a little too light. I know some beauty gurus are probably going to kill me for it, but... I'll just go back in and darken it up just a little bit. Get the window. Oh yeah. And the Lord said, let there be light. So the cool thing about this Visanti is it even comes with its own little setting powder. So all that orange right here, not only, you know, because usually you have to use your own setting powder, which is fine. I got no issues with that, but having some that goes with it or did go with it. There we go. It's pretty neat. Just take a little bit and I'm going to do the same motion with that same brush. Dab it along. And the reason why you want to set this is because you don't want it to mix in with your foundation. I've done it before and my foundation has looked orange and it's a lot of fun. I look like I had a bad fake tan. And with this, I don't even like wipe it off. I just pre press it into the skin. Just, you know, doesn't transfer. It's not going to mess with anything. It's not bad. So, yeah, I'm going to try this today. For foundation today, I'm going to use the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Foundation. And I'm just going to use that with a beauty blender, one from Ulta, because I love Ulta. But usually what I do is I just take maybe a pump and a half and just place it on my hand. And then basically what I'll do is I will just go in and just stamp everywhere where I want coverage. And you know what? I might get a lot of hate for this, but I want everything to match, so I do do... <laughs> do do. <laughs> I do my neck, and if my shirt's lower than my chest, just because I want everything to match. I don't want to look orange on my face and then, you know, almost white on my uh, on my neck. And then all we're gonna do is just bounce it into the skin. And there's a lot of controversy. Some people like a beauty blender, some people like, you know, a brush. I've always seen it as personal preference. I mean, with the brush, you get, uh, you know, that brush stroke look. So I do see people go in with the after, you know, with the beauty blender after using a brush instead of just using a beauty blender. Do you think that kind of. I mean, you do get different textures and, I guess, techniques with different ones, but I don't know. I think a beauty blender is just better. Like I said, that's personal for our preference. You like, uh, you like using the brush? Cool beans, dude. More power to you. And the thing is with a beauty blender, that's kind of the downside, is it does pick up a lot of product. But it also pushes a lot of that product onto your skin. And 
and I really like to go literally all the way around up to my hairline on my ears everywhere and the good thing with the ColourPop one is it's actually really buildable even though it's pretty lightweight so if I need to I'll just use a little bit more not too much just because I want to make sure that orange from the color corrector is covered really good I'll just put it all around like the center of my face, the remainder on my chin, whatever. Who am I hurting? And then when I go near my eyebrows, since be you know, my eyebrows are drawn on. I do try to, as best as I can, not mess them up too bad, which, I mean, as you can see, always fails. Got a hair on me? Yeah, I got a hair on me. So usually, And broke another rule. So I'd never do that on camera. What did I do? Well, I'll just go back in and just fix it up really quick. Because unfortunately, I don't have luscious, beautiful eyebrows. Mine are very sparse. And it's, it's a curse. What's funny is I was never even into makeup as a kid. I hated pink. Well, I still do. But I won't wear it besides the bow. Uh, I was always a tomboy. I mean, I wore uh, baggy pants, big shirts. I hung out with my brother. I was always the best friend. And all I'm doing right here is just going in with my wet and wild incognito, but this one is medium neutral, medium neutral. And you really don't need to use this much, this is just my own insecurities getting the better of me. And I like doing the forehead because I make some type of dumb design or I think tomorrow I'm going to do a heart. That's definitely something that's gonna happen. And then hopefully with the side that doesn't have too much product on it, I'm gonna go in and just bounce the concealer into the skin. And Wet n Wild's not bad considering its price. I mean, I think the foundations are the most expensive and I think those are like $5. I mean, come on, you go to Walmart and you can hit the grocery aisle and the makeup aisle. It's pretty cool. And I just go up a little bit to kind of give my face that lifted look. I might have to fix my eyebrows again, but I might do that off camera. And then with the forehead, I like to get the whole forehead itself.
I know it's definitely my lighting, but I'm gonna add just a little bit more right here. Because for me personally, I really like that bright, like, bright look. Perfect. So the next what I'll do is I will just go in with that Wet n Wild Photo Focus Translucent Powder again. And I'll just go in with a little fluffy brush and lightly, I'm, you don't really need a lot for this part. Just enough to, you know, set everywhere where you, you know, think you might have creasing. And sorry, I apologize about lighting and sound, everything. I don't know where this is going to go. I don't know if it's even going to go anywhere. If it does, I'll buy better equipment when the time comes. If I can afford it. I mean, you could see the powder, but look how sparse it is. You know what I mean? Like, it's there, but I'm not caking it on. Nothing like that. And then another little thing I like to do, and I don't know why I do this, is I just take some setting powder on my beauty blender, and I just make a nice little line just to kind of set everything, and it makes everything kind of flow together it looks a little bit better and again if anyone is watching this remember I am NOT a pro I am no makeup artist nothing I am literally just a person who likes to do makeup so if I'm doing it wrong if I'm doing it a way that you don't like or you think is not the right way you don't have to watch Makeup's all about fun and doing something that makes you feel good. And see right here, I'll go a little intense. Everywhere else, not so much. And then just take a fluffy brush. And usually I don't use such a small brush, but you know what? I'm doing it with everything else, so you know what? This one time, my cheeks can use the little fluffy brush. And the open five dome that I have here. The only part I don't wipe off just yet is just underneath the eyes because I do go back underneath and line them. So I'm literally just going to take a little brush and then go back in with that dark color again. And we're just going to go about a third of the way under the eye. And kind of what I like to do is just make them connect. And then just do the same.
And then what I'll actually do is go in with this like pink color right here, just to kind of line everything up together. Don't worry, I got a plan. I think, oh, excuse me, I think that pink just like kind of fits in nicely with everything. And then what I'll do is actually go back in with that lighter and probably that darker, I don't know. No, I'll just do the lighter color. And kind of just add it onto that pink. Nothing special, just a little bit. And then after that, then I'll go in underneath. out any fallout <laughs> Had an issue. right there so then before I go back to the face you know what actually I like let's keep going with the face the face the face the face I'm gonna take a nice angled brush here and I'm gonna use my bronzer highlight palette from profusion I'm feel so awful because I broke my favorite. As you can tell, I use one a lot. And I like this line because it gives you like a little guideline of where your bronzer should go. And just with the, just moving up, just going up with it. And look at the difference it's given. It just changed my fat face into actually a slimmer one. It's kind of nice. Okay, turn that down, please. And then with that same brown, just taking it on the forehead with the five dome. Five head, forehead. And all bronzer does is just give your face that little bit of warmth. I like to use mine. As both. Uh, uh, both bronzer and contour. And if you go a little too intense like I did, just take your beauty blender and it chills it out for you. Cool. And then next, before I forget, gonna take just a little flatter brush oh sorry cash and sorry about any background noise there's four humans here and four four animers so can get a little crazy. That's much better, much better. Anyways, so with that same 
brush, I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to use uh, this darker blush right here. These, though, are very pigmented. Like, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. And I don't like to go too intense with it. I just want, you know, that little splash of color, but I do the same motion like I would with the bronzer. And again, you go too intense. Just buff it down just a little bit. Mama's got issues today, apparently. All right, and then just real quick, I'm gonna go back to that. I keep breaking stuff. To my bronzer highlight thing, I think this thing's on its last limb, unfortunately. Just gonna take a little bit of my finger, a little bit of highlight. I like highlight, but I'm not one for too much of it. So I just like a little bit of shine, nothing too flashy. Too fancy and I don't like really using the brushes just because I don't know sometimes I feel like my finger can just do it better I pray to God I'm not the only one who thought of that's what she said when I when I said that okay so after that so then what I'll do is go in and I'll tight line my waterline and I'm just using the Ulta black eyeliner, very basic, just to go in and tight line. And then just go underneath. Contact went out of whack. We're gonna pretend that didn't happen. Yeah, just like that. And then next what I'll do is I will go in with the Essence 24 Ever Ink Liner. And I'll just do a basic, very basic liner, nothing fancy. I've just been practicing with wings a little bit, so I'll do a little wing. Okay. All right, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Makeup gods can get mad at me later. Gonna cheat again. Don't judge me. 
Or if you're gonna judge me, judge me from your side of the screen. Let's see, are we looking okay? Thinking more like incest cousins, but it'll work. So the next, I'll go in with the Essence Lash Princess Mascara. Very good mascara, very good for your dollar. And just go along my really sparse lashes. So what I found really cool, I was reading a documentary about A.A. Holmes and some of the ways that he had people like, you know, because everyone's heard that his hotel was, you know, like a complete maze. You can get in, but you couldn't get out. Kind of like Saw. And some of the ways that he had killed people were awesome. Some of them were like uh, from suffocation and a bunch of machines. I mean, it was totally neat. A.A. Holmes is probably definitely one of my favorite serial killers. And for some of you who don't know, horror movies, serial killers, all that good stuff, that's my forte. It's either that or I'll talk to you all day about the Backstreet Boys. Take your pick. Alright, and then for lip color today... I'm actually going to use my LA lip contour, uh, the LA Colors lip contour. Comes with a liner and a lipstick. So, yep, you just line your lips, take the crayon, who doesn't love coloring, huh? And then the last thing I do about that is just put a little bit of jelly gloss on my lips. And then last but not least, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some lashes I wore yesterday. They're called Foxy. They're actually an LA Colors one, um, and but I'm just gonna use that with my Duo uh, Quick Set Strip Lash Adhesive, and I'm gonna put my lashes on really quick and be right back. All right, lashes are on. I mean, when I do them, nothing fancy, but the last thing I do, is I just take eyelash curler. And I just join them together with my real lashes. Just keep some on throughout the day, keep some secure. But that is it. That is today's look. Pretty basic. Pretty simple. You know, nothing spectacular, nothing fancy. If you guys like this, you thought it was okay, uh, you know, let me know if there's something you might want to see a little bit more of. Uh, let me know and we'll see just how this goes. Thanks guys.